hydro turbine that we've installed is a siphonic uh, device uh, which generates electricity by passing water across a, a veined propeller which then, then drives a generator. Theoretically it works for 90% of the year. Obviously the extent to which it works efficiently depends on a whole number of things that are out of our control. These include rainfall. Uh, the river itself is spring fed so it generally very rarely falls below a certain volume. So rainfall is one thing or lack of rainfall is another. Uh, the other things that affect the output of the turbine, uh, it is seasonal to some extent. We switch it off during uh, autumn or six weeks in autumn because there are too many leaves in the river that clog the weed screen. But the other things are that even in the summer we get quite a lot of weed growth and reeds growing in the river which affects its characteristics of flow and that can reduce the output as well. But generally speaking we can expect to be producing electricity of some sort, not necessarily maximum output which is four and a half to five kilowatts, but certainly two to three kilowatts, uh, kilowatt hours, um, pretty well most of the year. The turbine was sized uh, to draw 450 litres per second uh, and that's where the original estimate of the 30,000 kilowatt hours per year came from. It was designed at that size because that should give, uh, allow it to be on for 90% of the year. There are, there are a number of components to the turbine. Uh, there's uh, a uh, an air valve, motorised air valve, there is an air blower, uh, then there is the, uh, the generator itself and the propeller that drives the generator. Uh, and in terms of its operation, the, uh, the air valve shuts, the uh, air blower switches on, uh, that essentially pumps air out from inside the turbine, which creates the suction inside and that draws water up into the turbine. At a, at a certain point then that starts falling over through the draft tube out of the turbine and that, that establishes a siphonic um, effect and water is then continued to be pulled in through the turbine through a, through a siphon and, and uh, turns the propeller which itself drives a, 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 a fan belt which then drives the generator. So that's, uh, it's quite simple uh, but all the components apart from the generator <laughs> and the propeller that turns it uh, have all been replaced at some stage since, uh, since we've had it installed. In terms of maintenance of that system, as it's a pretty simple system really, that's fairly maintenance free, uh, all I need to do is uh, grease the bearings and make sure the oil reservoirs kept um, reasonably full. Uh, occasionally I need to get inside the turbine to clear off accumulated debris that collects on the struts that support the turbine. Uh, leaves and, and bits of weed get in and, and get uh, caught on, the, on those struts and that really reduces the efficiency of the device. Because it's a, a propeller turbine we were required by the Environment Agency to put in a screen to prevent uh, fish being pulled through the turbine and damaged. So it's a fairly, um, it's a fairly fine mesh screen and that obviously collects all sorts of debris apart from fish. And those things have made me consider that if I were to do it again, I might well consider putting in a, a hydrodynamic screw system, which would re not require that screen. It wouldn't require the screen to be clean. Obviously, without the screen, I wouldn't need to be cleaning the screen. Uh, and. Uh, I think they also may operate more efficiently over a wider range of river conditions. But nevertheless, I've been very happy with, with the output that we've had from the turbine. And essentially, our, our energy bills are, are zero, or indeed negative, uh, over the course of the year. So, uh, in terms of financial uh, returns, it's worked out pretty well and indeed much better now that the government's changed the various incentives for small-scale turbines. We obviously had to get planning, uh, well, uh, approval from the Environment Agency for doing works on the riverbank. The River Bure here is a, is a main, designated as a main river, therefore any works done on the banks need Environment Agency approval. They were pretty encouraging really and, and, and quite helpful. 
Uh, the only other thing that I had to do was to carry out a water vole survey or, or get um, somebody in from Norfolk Wildlife Trust to carry out a water vole survey uh, so that if we discovered any water voles we could take appropriate action to avoid damaging any water vole burrows in the area. The other main bureaucratic thing was uh, registering the, the turbine as a generating station with Ofgem uh, and that was quite a tedious and drawn out procedure with a very long, a very long uh, application form. And then of course we had various um, regulatory things to do with regard to connecting the turbine to the grid. And it was really just a matter of providing them with, with, the, uh, with the specifications of the devices in place to protect the national grid from, uh, from our own generated electricity. People ask me whether um, the, uh, the hydro turbine produces all the electricity that we need for the house. Uh, and indeed you'd have thought that if we're producing anything more than 15,000 kilowatts, which is uh, significantly more than most normal households use, the answer would be yes. But uh, of course now we produce our own electricity we decided to install the heat pump which at, uh, when it's operating draws between 8 and 12 kilowatt, kilowatts and the, even at its best output the, uh, the turbine will generate uh, four and a half to five say so that when the heat pumps on we're obviously having to import the difference uh, but on the other hand of course the heat pump is very very rarely on during the summer and during all that period we're able to export the difference and of course we get paid nine pence per unit generated regardless of whether we use it or export it uh, and if we use it then we're saving ourselves the cost of having to import that electricity which is currently probably 13 to 14 pence per unit uh, and any that we export we get an extra three pence for exporting so over the course of the year it works out um, that we don't really pay anything at all for our electricity or indeed for our heating.